welcome to Guacamole Circus. I am Aaron Boyd. I am joined by Shad Sparks. Say something, Shad. I didn't have anything planned. I well, was gonna do a thing and I well, don't remember. It was mostly just like, uh, here's Shad Sparks, and Shad Sparks are like, ah, noise, so you know which voice is him. Set up, all- set up, set up. Punchline. Yeah, you know it. Yeah. Uh, I'm also joined by Travis Honeysuckle. His name's Travis. It's Travis Honeysuckle. It's- He's not that fun. Yeah. No, no, I go by Trace Monogasaki. So, today we're going to be talking about oh, Midsummer, uh, maybe Sonic, if we get to that, and also maybe a third thing, depending on how the first two things go. Uh, you will probably know. Uh, Wait, when can we address up. how we've been dead for like a year? No, shut up. We have <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm going to put <laughs> this out tomorrow and it won't matter. Master of Illusion, like Mysterio, topical, right? Yeah, like, that's, a, that's a movie. Go see <laughs> Spider-Man 2. The old one with Andrew Garfield. <laughs> oh, I the thought old, the really old one with Andrew the, Garfield. Oh, the, I thought you meant with Tobey Maguire. No, the old one with Andrew Garfield. There was none before that. Andrew Garfield was the epitome of Spider-Man. No, sure. no, mm, I disagree on that one. A Spider-Man Two is most authentic movie. Okay, it doesn't. Uh, uh, Amazing Spider-Man. 2. Doesn't blonde lady die in that movie? Isn't there a rhino? There's a rhino. Insert spoilers here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Spoilers for 2011's <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oh, don't God. Li- don't listen to this. If you haven't watched Amazing Spider-Man 2, it's great. It has Green Goblin, the best Green Goblin, Dane DeHaan. No, Willem Dafoe. You're wrong. Who? <laughs> <laughs> okay. For real, though, uh, spoiler warning for Midsummer because we're going to talk about that, and I don't really want to worry about not spoiling things. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Travis, how do you feel about uh, that? You yeah. haven't seen it. I've seen it twice. <laughs> Shad has seen it once. How do you feel about and the I've... name? Because I think that's the only thing you know about this movie. Um, I think it's German in nature? Uh, Germanic. 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 It's uh, Swedish. Swedish. Oh, hey, that's I'm, I'm Swedish, so I know everything about this movie. Oh, oh absolutely. There's an <laughs> Ikea bag in the corner over there. We're exactly. practically in Sweden. We have There's divorce movie. papers under the puzzle. <laughs> I mean, it's great. we got everything here. Everything's going We've really well. We've got water. We're staying... Hey, We're, stay hydrated yeah, out there. Yeah, it's quite toasty. Hot girl summer, 2K19. <laughs> stay hydrated out there, bitches. We're doing I'm talking great. about the men. <laughs> like me. Oh. <laughs> it's going great. Anyway. I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> so midsummer. Uh, any have you seen any like trailers for it, Trace? I have not seen anything. You don't know nothing, so I can almost be like the audience in this situation. I was gonna right? say the trailers don't really show anything. It's and a mess, just like the movie. Good. <laughs> oh man, I thought the movie was really good. It was, but it was just a wild mess, and it was great. <laughs> That's why I loved it because it was just all like it just goes zero to sixty, and I was like, oof. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So the bas- basic premise of the movie is uh, dude and his girlfriend are in a not great relationship. Dude and his buddies are going to go to Sweden to visit a friend's tight-knit community for a midsummer celebration, summer solstice. Is it a cult? I feel like it... Oh, oh, oh it, the moment, the moment that I even mentioned, oh, like, you used to live on, like, a commune, right? Yeah, oh, we're a very, like, close-knit community. And I'm like, a cult, cult shit. It's got to be cult it's shit. Happening. And it was cult shit. I've been looking into a lot of cult shit lately, and I was happy. You called it. Uh, but it doesn't start off there. It's, like, the opening shot basically tells you the entire movie. Which I missed. Yeah, Shad yeah. wasn't there for you. I, was like... late. I literally, I, I work like a block and a half from the movie theater and I took the wrong way. I go there every day. <laughs> like, I drive that road and then I'm just like, I'm heading towards uh, like the hospital. And I was like, I'm going the wrong fucking way. Why and I text Aaron, I'm like, south? I'm such an idiot. I turned the wrong way, but I'm on my way. So wait, you went south to go to the, Yeah. Because I was like, for whatever in my head, I was like, I thought of Mike's car wash that sits there on the corner. I was like, yeah. okay, that's the next one up. Because uh, you, the, it's like the Marco Mall, and then you keep going to Mike's You might car not wash. have any idea what we're talking about. <laughs> yes, right everybody now. lives around here in rural America. No, it's one of my Indiana. friends from Germany specifically asked me to send send this to her. So, uh, okay. Um, uh, it's what's a, her name? Uh, uh, Pia? Pia? Yeah, Pia Schubel. Okay, Derek, um, I want to let you know. Here where we live, uh, there is a mall. He's probably going to go on about this for a while. And the, it, none of this, this is, is getting a, cut. 
<laughs> this part might have to get cut. It absolutely will not. I um, really don't want to edit this one a whole lot, but I might have if to. If you just let me get through you, it. You just need to not. <laughs> it would stop. I'm subtly hinting that you should not explain this shit. There's a mall, and then you go a little bit further, and there's, there's the car, yeah. car wash in the movie theater. And I was like, oh, I'm ne next to the Markland Mall, so I got to keep going. And I went down the rest of the way, and I'm like, I'm next to five guys. This isn't where I should be. And there's McAllister's and Bob Evans. I know where the eating places are because I'm fat. Okay, so this is the part that I might cut. <laughs> Long just, story short, and then it smash cut to here, and I say, long story short, I took the wrong way and showed up about 15 minutes late to the no, movie. I'm going to say but, that it's going to be, we're just going to cut the shot saying, because I'm fat, and then long story short. <laughs> well, either way, opening shot of Midsummer. Shad missed it. I've seen it yeah. twice. First time I saw it, I was like, oh, that's pretty dope, because it's like a uh, moon in the upper left corner, a sun in the upper right corner, uh, and then it's like four panels. The first one was like skeletons and like tubes and stuff. And I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. Uh, the middle one is like a dude in a tree, like watching over people walking along a path. The third panel is like trees with like a group of people walking in front of it. One of them's got a jester hat on. Uh, and the last one is like angels flying around a cliff uh, and like a maypole. It's like a vertical. Th it looks like a cross with two circles under the bar, oh, okay. uh, but made of like flowers. It looks like a penis. Uh, and that basically explains what happens in the movie, which is great. It would have uh, been nice to see. Absolutely. Because now everything at the end makes sense now that I know what was pictured in the beginning. Because I didn't understand at the end why things happened. I was like, why was that person looking like that and whatnot? So. And Shad also missed the only jump scare in the movie. Cause, so we have that shot of like the four panels. It opens up like a storybook. Ooh. There's like this tonal singing uh, over, uh, over shots of like s snowy forests and like super cool landscapes and out of nowhere there's a phone ring and like we get closer and closer to a like a suburban house in winter uh and then there's like a the answering machine our protagonist main character uh is like talking to her parents saying she got a really weird email from her sister uh and the camera like pans over to two, an old couple sleeping in their room uh still breathing at that point that will become key later uh <laughs> Uh, is this just like some weird coma, like fever dream that these two old people are having? No. I wish. I fucking wish, my dude. Oh, okay. Okay, so, first, so the first panel in the thing was a skeleton and some people with tubes attaching them together. So the, the, our protagonist has gotten uh, an email from her sister that says, uh, uh, it's over, it's all black, I'm taking our parents with us, goodbye. And the sister em has emailed back and is like, whoa, whoa, like, what's going on? Are you okay? Because apparently this sort of thing happens all the time. Her sister is uh, bipolar, and, like, she, like, has these episodes. It happens. Uh, but it she's not happens. picking up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then there's, like, a couple, like, short scenes showing, like, her relationship with her boyfriend, who's kind of a dick. Uh, I hated him. Yeah, he, he was, was such... The worst. He's, like, an incredibly... Un he didn't want to be in the relationship. And he's Hasn't a terrible actor. In yeah, he's not a... He's all right. He's a terrible. Kind of reminded me of my brother, not going to lie. He's a uh, terrible. Like, not he's a in, terrible brother. <laughs> <laughs> not in, like, the, the way he treated his girlfriend, I hope. I hope uh, not. <laughs> but just in, like, looks-wise. Uh, smash cut to boyfriend getting a phone call at the pizza place, like, hanging out with his buds. And his buds are like, you should just dump her. You can go impregnate all these women. It'll I mean, be fine. I hate it all. Almost an exact yeah. quote impregnate all these women anyway it was like there's so many swedish girls you can bang over there dude and i was like yeah oh, fuck this is yeah. the same dude from we're the millers and chronicles of narnia 3 <laughs> oh shit was he did he play edward he in chronicles became of dragon Nine? boy not edwin oh yeah. it um, was is there edwin or edward are they both in that I think movie it's edwin is the, the guy i think you're right he's but... the pevensey boy yeah <laughs> uh, long story short, uh, boyfriend picks up the phone. The girlfriend is just like wailing because uh, cut to next one, next shot, which is uh, like firefighters walking into a thing and like shutting off cars, and you see the like the exhausts of the cars. There's two cars in the garage. Shut off both of them. This is when I walked uh, into the theater. Hoses are taped to the exhaust pipes oh, no. running into the house. Mm -hmm. uh, they follow them up to the this double door where it's shoved, tucked underneath the door and the, the door is duct taped shut. Oh, no. uh, open the door. The couple we saw in the beginning, they're dead now. Carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, sister went all then out. They, yeah. Then they like follow the hose back 
and fo follow it down the hallway, and the sister has a hose taped to her face, and she is also dead. And that's the beginning of the movie. Holy crap. I oh. didn't, because I didn't get any of the, like, precursor stuff, so I didn't know what was happening. I was just like, I walk in, and there's a a nice fireman leaning yeah. over a steering wheel turning off a car and I was like oh they're in a garage that somebody must have killed themselves with carbon monoxide poisoning and I was like okay you fucking I don't know. wish I was gonna say I don't know what's going on you like with the simple. with the story I thought somebody just killed themselves and it's a crime drama and I was like where is uh, uh, Mark Wahlberg's brother Donnie <laughs> like where's Donnie Wahlberg and uh, Blue Bloods I think he's on with Tom Selleck I thought it was going to be that. Tom I was like, Selleck's still alive. Like, I can't wait. Hell yeah, he is. <laughs> He's killing it on Blue Bloods. Everybody watch Blue Bloods. It's on the CW. I don't think you're sure. You don't I even don't know. know. But I'm going to like super condense the rest of it real quick. Uh, yeah. So they're all going to Sweden. Girlfriend is now going to Sweden too because the boyfriend felt sorry for her because mm -hmm. uh, okay. he's a dick. He's like, she, she accept. I invited her. She accepted. She's not coming, though. Don't worry about it. She comes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, they go to Sweden. They drive four hours to get to uh, Helga. Uh, what? Sweden? So they just drive to Sweden. You only fly and then drive. Uh, there's a dumb transition about that. That's, um, <laughs> it's like Indiana Jones. <laughs> we'll come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No. It's no, Indiana no, no. Jones 4. And it's it's like slightly cool. Shia LaBeouf is there for some reason. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, Shia! Shia! <laughs> Anyway, they get to this small community, and there's, like, a bunch of disorienting shots from above. Uh, they walk through this circle. Like, they're walking through the woods. There's, like, a flower path. Uh, they come out in this community through this, like, circle door thing that's, like, the center of the sun. And, like, it's a sun from around it, Sounds which really is kind of rad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, everyone's wearing white clothes. Uh, the ritual, like, the they're going to have this big festival. Festival starts tomorrow. It's nine days of feasting. Uh, Are they cannibals? No. no. God, I, I yeah. fucking wish. I know. When I heard <laughs> feasting, I was like, they're going to fucking eat these kids. <laughs> yeah. It's going to get real um, weird, and I can't wait. But first day, they go have a meal. There's this old couple. Uh, uh, then there's, like, a ritual. couple, like, leads the way to the cliffs. Um, there's a big ceremony at the base of the cliffs. Uh-oh, people at the top. Oh, at the base of the cliffs. Like, the opening shot of that is a dude holding a big-ass wooden mallet. It's hilarious. And it's just like, a comically that, big mallet. It's like, hilarious. that mallet's gonna get used. <laughs> like, Smouse Hammer? Uh, it's slightly smaller, but yeah, it's up there. Uh, so, like, there's this ritual, like, person reading from a holy book at the bottom. Uh, old couple, like, bleed on rocks. Then they jump, lady jumps off. Uh, lands on this uh, rock cylinder. Mm -hmm. Every the people who have been invited there who are not part of the community freak the fuck out. Naturally, mm -hmm. they're like, "Oh, I just killed herself! What the fuck? What the fuck?" Mm -hmm. And they look back up at the thing, and do the a dude is now walking towards the edge. Uh, makes this pose, uh, jumps off. But you know how like people jump into the water like pencil style, so they're mm -hmm. gonna go deep. He jumps off like that. He did that. Oh, no. Uh, breaks his legs, falls over, and is, like, lying there like, uh, it's mallet time, motherfuckers. <laughs> finish him off. I love that shot, by the way. It just does, like, a, a side note. He, like, he jumps off, and they do, like, a wide shot of, you can see the cliff in, like, the top corner. And he just falls, and, like, usually they'll do, like, a, a quick cut to, like, the impact or no, something. No, no, you, you just, just watch like, it happen. He, it was like a, uh, like a uh, foam peanut hitting the floor. It was just, like, dink. He just, like, <laughs> fucking crumbles. And they just fell over. Uh yeah, that was funny. so everyone loses their mind. Uh, this one couple from London says they're going to leave in the morning. Uh, uh, spoiler alert, they don't. Uh, <laughs> they're at the bottom of the cliff with the mallet. No. Uh, <laughs> so like they're like, oh, we're fucking leaving in the morning. Uh, boyfriend goes missing. Uh, the pastor man is like, oh, he left. The truck only sits two. Went to the train station. They'll be back in 35 minutes. Pick you up. Take you to the train station. It's fine. And this couple is, like, tight-knit. Like They, they do, are engaged they do to be married, together. and they are, like, mm, So together. she's like, he wouldn't leave me. And yeah. Stuff. He's and like, then, that doesn't make any sense. He would have yeah. told me. Um, he's dead now. Uh, she's like, truck will be back for you. Don't worry. Next morning, both of them are missing. They're like, have you seen, have you seen him, her? And they're like, took him to the train station. Mm. Took him to the train station. Uh... <laughs> They're just like a trash bin out back that just has train stations. You on fucking side. wish. Uh, <laughs> not far off. You're not going to get that. Uh, but then uh, one dude has been hitting a dab pen the whole time. 
Uh, he pees on the ancestral tree. Oh no! <laughs> this was this was the kid from Narnia. <laughs> it's so like why, as he does it, someone's like, "No, no, get away from that! Put you your disgusting the, dick away!" Flips the fuck, which was lame because our like our movie theater's trash, so they like the screen wasn't down far yeah, enough, the so it cut off part of the subs, up. so it was just like. Get away from the tree. Put away your disgusting, and then the rest of it cut off. But I could just you see, can the, see it. The Put top of the D, I, C, and K, and it was like nice. Oh, that's great. Uh, He's like, he like this one lady is like, come with me. I'll, we're gonna like she's been like flirting with him. Uh, he's like, come with me. I'll, where are we going? I'm like, I'll show you. I'll show you. Goes away. Doesn't show back up for we a while. Suspicious. Uh, the black dude of the movie. He's like one of yeah. He's the one black dude of the movie. Kind of yeah. <laughs> uh, he goes to like the the holy temple where like these there's these books. By the way, the oracle of this cult uh, is specifically inbred to have disabilities, so he's unclouded by normal cognition. What incest is the key, Travis? Yeah. And uh, I've lived my life wrong this entire time. Yeah, no. And, and the one black Keep that dude, in mind. <laughs> the one black dude's like, "What happens when he like dies? You just wait for someone else who's like unclouded." They're like, "No, no, 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 no. We breed him like that." And it was like, oh, no. that's Hell fucked yeah. up. Uh, Hell yeah. But yeah, he's like r- like reading this book, taking pictures, something he has been told explicitly not to do. Uh, and like he sees a door open behind him and like friend walks in, but he's like zombie, like, ugh. He's not wearing any pants, his dick's cut off, it's fun. Because uh, <laughs> it was disgusting. Yeah, and the buddy who's like taking pictures is like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, uh, like you close the door, we're not supposed to be in here. And as he does that, conked in the back of the head. It's mallet time again. Hell yeah. Uh, Break the rules, you get the mallet. Yeah, so now we're... And then there were two. There's boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh, uh, The the, the abusive couple. Uh, (laughs) The girl has, like, been getting more involved in in things and, like, baking with people. And, like, they're, like, accepting her and, like, having a good time. It's great. Uh, Boyfriend. They foreshadowed this thing. There was, like, a tapestry where it was, like... A uh, girl wants to be in love with boy. Uh, girl like picks flowers and like dreams about it. Girl cuts off her pubic hair and bakes it into a pie. Mm-hmm. What? Girl menstruates into cup. Gives both to boy. Oh, boy no. hypnotized. Yeah. Married with baby. It's very what? disgusting. That was a tapestry. It's very disgusting. So that happens to the boyfriend. <laughs> From his girlfriend? No, no, no. Oh, the, someone, in, someone, cult in the cult, member. someone in the cult does that too. That him. was the weirdest thing. Like, I like. Th- there's. We'll go back to this to talk about because there's so many cool shots in this. That's why I love Ari Aster as a director because there's just so many. It like pans across the tapestry and then it's like, oh, really zoomed in across it and there's like, yeah. I don't know, like seven panels. Something like that. And you that. get to like the fourth one, it's just puffy, hairy badge. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't need this. I didn't I didn't pay three ninety nine for this movie to see this. <laughs> Oh, you signed up for that. You, I guess. You, yep. I didn't. I wasn't given a waiver. I so wasn't ready for this. Also, everyone's on drugs this whole time. Like they're being given various things. The like the landscape in the background shifting. Uh, so like, girl is like, today we're gonna we're gonna go do the like this may, maple dance. We're gonna decide who's the May Queen. Who's like this big deal? Uh, so like they dance until everyone falls off. Girlfriend wins. She's now the May Queen. Good stuff. Uh, also, boyfriend has been knocked out and is now gonna go fuck cult member. Uh, Number seven? I don't know. Red haired cult member who is. fed him her pubic hairs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Definitely not a nice prank I want to have. Yeah. So, girlfriend goes yeah. off to bless the fields because she's <laughs> yeah. the May Queen and she's having a good time. Uh, boyfriend is like super out of it because he's been given a bunch of drugs they blow more smoke in his face it's a good time uh <laughs> just stay high you don't need to come down That's yeah, absolutely just keep going walks, down, walks into the room there's this bed of flowers with red-haired girl like sitting on it like with her legs tucked up underneath her mm-hmm. arranged in a semicircle behind that is a bunch of naked ladies of varying, varying age. ages oh no best shot of the movie <laughs> and they're I'll all going you. like they're like holding their breasts going like ha ha Ah. Yeah, doing a bunch of random shit and I was like uh, what have dude I done just, why am I here dude is just like wide eyed like what the fuck is going on I think you'd be sober walking in and doing that <laughs> <laughs> doing the same thing. what is happening yeah so anyway he I starts this was the bathroom <laughs> he, he might as well it's up. going to yeah but he uh, oh, no. starts having sex with a girl girlfriend is now blessing the fields and having like a good time mm-hmm. uh, she's having a great time a yeah she know in the back room yeah, when she gets back, uh, she's like, okay, what's next? And the girl who's been with her the whole time is like, go to the, this elder's house. 
uh, she's going to have a discussion with you. It's like the only, it's a thing exclusively for May Queens. And she's like, okay, but what's happening in that building as there's all this, ah, uh, You just uh, a chorus of, ah, <laughs> uh, uh, She's like, what's over there? And her the, the cult friend is like... They're just screening Avatar. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. But she's like, that's not for us. The last uh, one, friend. And no, girlfriend... Oh, God. And James be... Cameron. God damn it, James it's Cameron. Gary. Avatar. Oh. Avatar. <laughs> I, I'm losing my mind. Uh, you know there's more of those movies coming I out? Can't like we, I can't like wait. Like we needed them. I can't them. wait for the trash. Oh. Sam Worthington. Yep. Just oozing charisma, Sam Worthington. Anyway, girlfriend sees boyfriend fucking cult member. Uh, then she, there's a super cool moment we'll get to later with a, a bunch of the cult women who comfort her. Uh, it's final day. We gotta have nine human sacrifices. Four new bloods have died. Uh, and four cult members uh, have died. The two people from the very beginning, two that have volunteered, and one final sacrifice that is at the discretion of the May Queen. And the options are boyfriend or honorable Torbjorn. That's <laughs> yeah, so how they address him. I, I love that. Like, Torbjorn. Honorable they, like, Torbjorn. They, what is Torbjorn from? This sounds around something nerdy. Uh, Overwatch. 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 There's oh, a character yeah. named Torbjorn. Uh, because they, the boyfriend is like skulking around. Yeah, he, hilar- he's like running around naked after he has sex. Shot oh, he like sees a group of, because he's like running without covering anything. Sees a group of people, covers his dick, keeps running, uh, runs <laughs> into a chicken coop. Thing. Runs into a chicken coop. Oh, is God. like looks out. Is like, is anyone coming? Turns around, sees the the, the dude who supposedly left first. Who was like, station. he's going on the train station. Truck's coming back for you. He is suspended from the ceiling. Uh, his back has been cut open. His lungs are outside of his body. Mm-hmm. He's oh. alive, though. Yeah, oh, and it, they, they make a shot that goes from out of focus to, like, panning back behind him, and then it focuses in on his lungs, and they're, and they're moving. They're spread oh. like wings. It's wild. Uh, oh. And he's got, like, flowers on his arms, and flowers replacing his eyes. And he's making this, like, subtle, horrible, like, <gasps> It's noise. some Event Horizon oh. shit. It's wild. Yeah, a uh, dude, like, looks underneath, like, at the flower eyes, then turns around, cult member blows dust in his face. Pocket <laughs> sand. <laughs> Ninja dust. Keep and then, out. like, like leans down into the thing and, like, shuts both of his eyes. And then, like... It's a really cool effect. Like, yeah. they put on the camera, like, just, like, two slits over it to oh, shut it. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> the screen's dark for a couple me. seconds. Uh, then, like, you hear, like, Christian, Christian, hello? Like, slap, slap. Uh... <coughs> And then, like the eye, they open the eyes, and it's this lady who's like, "Christian, you're awake. Good. Listen, you can't talk, you can't move. Okay." And then, like, and he's, then just backs away. <laughs> yeah, and he's just like in this wheelchair, just kind of like leaning to the side. Yeah, he's got a blank. It's like he has polio. They <laughs> put a blanket over him, everything. And he's just like crippled to the he's side. Full FDR up there. Pretty much. And like now, I'm... girlfriend gets to make a choice. <laughs> Yeah. Honorable Torbjorn. I love it because it's just a wide shot of all the people, and then you just see boyfriend crippled in wheelchair, <laughs> and then this random guy just standing next to him, and she's like, who do I choose? <laughs> Doesn't show who she chooses. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ooh, you see people like the remains of the previous people who have died mm-hmm. wheeled into this thing, except for the two volunteers from the cult. They're alive. They're just chilling in this like yellow mm-hmm. temple thing. Mm-hmm. Uh uh, you see them get wheeled in, and then the next shot is a bear on a table, with its like chest cut open, and this dude's like showing these kids how to like cut intestines out. You see boyfriend sitting in the corner in the no. wheelchair, uh, and like once they're done cutting out, scooping out all the goopy bits of the bear, uh, the, they just lift him up onto the table. The next shot is his face sticking out of the bear's mouth, sitting in this yellow temple. They're just like. Oh, God. Like, he's not making noise. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. He's paralyzed. Uh, so, like, she chose him to die. That's fun. Nice. Uh, I mean, it sounds like he deserved it. Yeah, he beginning. definitely did. Yeah, he did a lot of shitty things throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then the thing gets burned down, and he's like, oh, oh, oh as he's burning alive. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh holy yeah. shit. Okay, time to talk about cool things in this. What do you want to start with, Shad? Because I got a bunch I really want to talk about. Um, I want to talk about... The shitty boyfriend first. Cool. Because at the beginning, I was like, this guy's the freaking worst. Because 
the girlfriend has like because her parents just fucking died. Yeah. So and like sister. And, and sister. sister. So she was like always like breaking down and stuff, just having panic attacks, which mm-hmm. is a recurring thing throughout the movie. Like she just starts having a panic panic attack and has to like break off on her own. And then it, like while after like after her parents and sister die, it like cuts to her like crying and her boyfriend's like holding her and stuff. But right before that was the shot of him and his dudes at the diner. And apparently they've been in the relationship for four years. Four years. years. He thinks it's three and a half. Yeah, which is a funny joke later on. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was three and a half. You know, (laughs) a couple things. You know, you know, people in relationships. You guys will laugh at that. Uh, (laughs) Dog just got up here. Um, We're joined in the studio by Dog. Dog. (laughs) Just came inside. We don't know who this is. Um, I'm going to get this dog out of here. (laughs) He, because they're like sitting around the, uh, around the table at the diner, and he's like, "Man, I just want to break up with her. She's she's got too much baggage. She needs to she needs to see a therapist." That's what Narnia kid says. He's like, "She should be telling this shit to her therapist." He's it's like, literally she, abuse. I know. Yeah. Oh my god, I wanted to beat the shit out of that. <laughs> he was so annoying. Yeah. Um, because he was like. She needs to see a therapist, and then the boyfriend's like, "Well, she has a therapist." And he's like, "She needs to call him or whatever." It was just hor- oh my god, it was the so stupid. Kind of people, the worst kind of, kind of dudes. People. I hope that's not what all people think dudes talk about. Well, some dudes do that though. They do, some which dudes. is stupid. I hate that. It's <laughs> oh my god, so, oh, I hated that. Um, what was I saying? Just boyfriend being shitty person the entire time because um, they were like. You've been wanting to get out of this relationship for like a year now. You need to get off the fence about this. And then that's when she calls like crying because her parents just died. Um, but that's just that him. I just hated him. That was the one because he immediately bails on their friends after immediately after things happen to them. Mm-hmm. They like disappear. He's like, oh, man, like we were not associated with him because the cult members are like someone stole our holy book. I don't want to point fingers, but like, just please return it. Uh, they're cult members. They know that the people are dead. Yeah. Uh, but he's like, I just want to say that, like, we didn't have nothing to do with this. That guy, he took it. We're Immediately not threw him under the bus. Because they had been, because, uh, I got his name's Josh. Whew. Don't have to refer to him as black guy. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be real scared. I was like, I don't remember his name. Uh, even though they hammered shows. home the names, like, they introduced them to so many people. So, so, they, yeah. um, so Josh, his, like, whole thing is he's going with, uh, their friend that's from the cold. Taylor. Yeah, him. I don't... I couldn't remember his name. Um, he's going to, like, study his senior thesis, which is about, or, like, like... do research for it, rather. Yeah. Uh, he... the His thesis was supposed to be on Midsummer traditions in yeah. European countries. Um, so that's why he was going. And then, like, halfway through the movie, Christian, the bad boyfriend, uh, he rolls up. He's like, like, hey, I finally figured out what I want to do for my senior thesis. You know what you're doing for your senior thesis? I'm going to do it, too. And but Josh is just like, I know. <laughs> Josh is just like, the fuck, dude? Like, that's the whole reason we came here was so I could study this. And he's like, yeah, but you're going to go to Germany next, so we're going to keep doing the same thing. I just want to do it about this cult or whatever. Yeah. Tight-knit community or whatever. <laughs> he's like, we are not a cult. And totally. Josh, like, rightfully goes after him, like, what are you doing? And he... Like, Christian, like, backs up, he's like, the fuck, dude? And he's like, no, the fuck, dude? This is my thesis. And you're just joking. And, it like, the, the, their argument ends with Christian just, like, he goes, um, well, this is what I'm doing, so... If you, you want to collaborate... Yeah, if you want to collaborate, okay or that. if you want to do it separate, that's fine. And then backs out, and then he just left with Josh, like, the fuck is going on? And that was the funny part, but... So then Josh, he's the one who sneaks into the temple to like take pictures of the holy book. He did not. He wants to oh, he, he wants to put that. it in his in his thesis. And uh then he gets clubbed and everything, and then the next day they're like, What did you just return the book? It'll be fine. You don't have to nobody has to know it was you if you stole it. And then Christian is just like, Well, I don't really give a fuck about him, so uh, he's the one that did it. So we we have no association to him. If you find him, go ahead and kill him. I don't care. It's, he's just a kid. Kick him out the door so he can get hit. I don't care. All right. Cool. Shit, Tristan. Cool, like, uh... You just called him Tristan. No, Tristan. Tristan, I'm, I'm smart. I have, My I sweet have, baby uh, boy. I <laughs> notions already about Tristan. Uh, hate a, him. A big theme Worst. in the movie was mirrors and mirroring. I love those. So there's a bunch of cool shots where... Uh, you will have one person in the foreground and then either a mirror in the foreground as well or behind the person where the other person who's having a conversation is uh, 
uh, like they're pictured and they're like speaking to the person we see. Uh, and that's like in the first half of the movie before they go to, to Sweden, it's kind of like showing like the two faces of this person and what you're talking to is not really like the genuine them mm -hmm. uh, or like the genuine them is in the mirror instead. Uh, which is kind of like a really cool thing to do in my opinion. That's pretty dope. That's a really cool concept. Yeah, like uh, it's, it's cool that because most of the like conversations at the beginning are one takes, mm -hmm. so like that's a good way to like not have the camera panning or just everybody in one giant shot. Like they come back from a party, uh, Christian and uh, Danny. Danny was the girl's name, uh, the boyfriend and girlfriend. They go back because uh, uh, he comes into her room before when after her parents and sister have died, and he's like, "Hey, are you awake?" And she like rolls over and he's like, "Hey, I'm just gonna go to a party for a little bit." You just stay here and sleep. It'll be okay. Uh, have some time to yourself. She's like, no, it's okay. I'll come with you and stuff. So they go, and uh, that's when, like, Sweden trip, trip, trip comes up. <laughs> yep. And uh, Danny's just like, why didn't I hear about any of this? And he's like, well, I just decided today that I was going to go. And she's like, you've had your ticket for two oh, weeks, yes. dude. <laughs> yeah, and while this conversation is taking place, he's at a desk, but yeah. you see him in this mirror. She's standing at the door. And she's, like, leaning up against the door. It was really it's beautiful. Cool. I, that's why I love Ari Aster, just his in Hereditary, another great movie that you should watch. Um, it's like one of the plot points is like a dollhouse. Like that's one of the themes, like people being stuck in a dollhouse and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the shots are like from structural views. You know, like when you're looking at a, into a dollhouse, you just see like the frames, but not like doors or anything. A lot of the camera pan stuff is like you just see door frames, so it looks like you're peering into a dollhouse. And he does a lot in this one too with like those with like the mirrors and stuff. But in this, it, once we reach Sweden, it stops being about physical mirrors and starts being about people mirroring actions. Mm -hmm. uh, like at the very, at the first big meal that everyone has, mm -hmm. these this old couple that are soon to be throwing themselves off of a cliff, they sit down. Well, they they walk up to the table and someone says like. Uh, so when, like, how long are we going to stand here? And Pella is like, we'll stand as, until it's the right time to sit down. Old couple sits down, and it's a wave of everyone sits down. Oh, that's cool. Uh, they pick up their silverware, everyone picks up their silverware. So it's really like, it's a super culty thing of mirroring actions and getting everyone doing the exact same thing at the same time. Uh, which I think is fascinating and super fits, uh, what the cult was, uh, and when the cult members greet each other, they put, like, their right hand with, like, a drink in it, mm -hmm. uh, in the, like, the person they're greeting's, uh, left shoulder, and that person does the same to them, hmm. uh, and then they drink, uh, but my, probably my favorite moment in the film is after girlfriend has just seen her boyfriend having sex with this cult member, uh, she is understandably super upset about this and is destroyed. Yeah. And these cult, the, the ladies who went with her to go bless the fields, they gather around her and they like, they usher her to the, like, back to the place that they've been sleeping. Mm -hmm. Uh, but she like crawls out and she's just wailing and like, they gather around her. Uh, and like, as she's wailing, they like start like yelling with her until yeah. they're all in unison and doing the same thing. And then she starts to calm down. It was a really surreal thing to hear of just all of them just yelling in unison. Like, like at the beginning, they weren't in sync, mm -hmm. uh, but then they got in a rhythm of everyone, like, which is both like a really cool thing to have happen because it's like, wow, these people really care about me. Mm -hmm. uh, and also incredibly creepy because it's like they are manipulating me. Yeah, mm -hmm. through my actions. And it's, it, yeah. With the mirroring thing, it's like at what point, at what point does it stop being me leading the action and it becomes someone else leading the action uh, so that, that that I thought was just super fascinating because she shows up in a very fragile state and yeah, is slowly I, I felt so freaking bad for her for the whole movie because like she, her boyfriend definitely takes advantage of her and she's never had with her family she never really had a, a family I mean nobody that really basis for relationships. Yeah, yeah which is a, a point the, that comes up yeah Pela says like oh I lost my family my parents died in a fire they burned up but I've always had a family I've always been held here uh, tell me Danny do you feel held does Christian feel like home to you 
And that's kind of the moment where she has now starting is starting to be indoctrinated into mm-hmm. this cult. Mm-hmm. And by the end of it, she is part of the cult. Yeah. With the final shot being uh, the temple where everyone is burning, including her now ex-boyfriend. I would hope her ex-boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's still considered. She's like, that's my boyfriend. He the died. building is collapsing in. She is, like, covered in flowers. And she's, like, was, like, wailing. But when she sees this, she just smiles. And that's the end of the movie. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean that's good <clears throat> like good character development for her I guess like just completely growing and then realizing oh my boyfriend's a piece of shit like time to murder him yeah cause she there at the beginning like when she like addresses like him going to Sweden without her not telling her mm-hmm. cause obviously he was planning to break up with her but he was definitely stringing her along and being a real dick about it yeah um but when they get back to her house her apartment or whatever into her room and they're like talking he's like i really feel like you're attacking me right now and she's like no i'm she's like tries to calm him down which that's like a big thing for her character at the being beginning is her um like apologizing for things when she doesn't need to like it's not her fault but she like feels like she's like i don't want to be a burden or anything so she apologized so uh her being in the right of addressing him for being a piece of shit turns into her apologizing for talking about it. Like, she just wants to have a conversation like you're supposed to in a, in a relationship and he's like, I don't want to talk about it. I'm just a big, strong I'm guy. I'm just going to leave. Do it. Yeah, he's like, I just want to leave. She's like, no, no, just sit down and we can talk about it. Like, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, it's it's no big deal that you're going to Sweden. I think that's awesome that you're going. So it, it's just like a complete 180. When he dies the in the movie, do people clap? Like, is that, no. is that a thing? No. no, like, there is... You mean, like, in the theater? Yeah. We don't yeah. know, because there were about five people in there with us. <laughs> no, it was, it was Shad, I, and a, a couple in the movie theater. So, two today. couples. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, one couple. <laughs> By the way, my text didn't go through, but you asked where I was sitting, uh-huh. and I was going to say, Shad, there's one other person. I, was, I figured when I walked in, and I, like, kind of... I couldn't see because my eyes hadn't adjusted to the darkness... And I was like, I don't hear any breathing or coughing or human noises. I'm like, it's probably just me and Aaron. So I was going to, like, saunter up. But I was like, if I do that, it's going to be the time that there's some people in there. And they're going to look over like, who is the special needs kid over there on the stairs? It's the Oracle from the movie. Yeah, right? for real. You're so I just, like, I got inside the door and just sat in the first seat. And then as the movie started and, like, some silly shots happened, I just hear Aaron go, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, there he is. So I was going to move up next to him, but I was like, I'm going to stay here and experience this. It's almost as recognizable as the Patrick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, so the big themes of this movie were like mirroring and like these weird toxic relationships. Uh, and also like this kind of codependence that can form and like the way in which cults can prey on people. And sometimes like the types of people that are like susceptible to this it's mm-hmm. like smart people who are, are vulnerable yeah hmm. uh, so yeah do you have any final thoughts on midsummer um if you're in on? if you want to pay 3.99 and go for a wild ride that has titties in it i say go for it because it gets real fucking weird at the end and it's a it's so great good. time it's not like there are there's exactly one jump scare and it's not really a jump scare uh and it just it's just deep like claws of anxiety digging their way into my chest is how I felt the first mm-hmm. time I watched it. I really enjoyed it. It might not be in theaters for much longer as evidenced yeah. by the audience. I was going to say, when I like I walked in, I was like, hey, one for the 345 of Midsummer." He was like, usually the tickets are like, I don't know, 6 or $7. He goes, three ninety nine. dollars I'm like, oh shit, this thing's going to bomb. <laughs> Which makes me feel really bad because I really like A24, the, the uh, studio that puts yeah. it out, and then the director, Ari Aster, because... After seeing two of his horror movies now, I really like them because this one didn't have as much dread in it as heredit- her- oh, Hereditary. Oh, I had it. Just because I was, like, seeing all these, like, for- there's everything is foreshadowed. Yeah. Like, like very, very yeah. subtly. Yeah, it's the same director and the same studio and everything. Um, so, I mean, I really like his stuff and really appreciate because, especially in the age of jump scares and stuff where that's mm-hmm. the big thing, that's the, you go for the show pretty much, which is ironic but i mean you go for the i don't know what's the what's the word you just go for the you want to the popcorn Mm -hmm. yeah family night thing of just like oh we got scared you know that kind of thing so it's really nice to have reinvigorating to have movies like i don't know get out and kind of uh what's the other one that just came out us i dug us it was 
I didn't see all of it, but I saw what? part of it. I watched it three times. <laughs> okay. I didn't want to pay the money to go see it just because I was like, I couldn't I've flesh got, out time to do I've it. I've got a buddy who gets me in the theater for free. Don't. Oh, don't wow. Down. I could like, like, uh, go there and <laughs> get in free with you. So, I mean, it's nice to have movies like that that kind of reinvigorate so your I'm drive a, for dread and good horror. Horror film person, as you, I mean, as you know, because we watched Hereditary. And by the end, I was yeah, like, Yeah, nope, that was nope. the worst because we watched it at the Claypools <laughs> and the whole family hated it. And I was like, what? Why do you hate this? Like, yeah. The end was stupid. I was like, I can kind of see that because the ending, it like, if there were any loose ends, they were just like, The audience isn't going to understand this, so let's just wrap it up real tight and nice. And it just kind of cheapens the end. But, yeah. you know. I did like Get Out, though. Like, I'm, like I said, I'm not a big horror person, but I really like Get Out. I'm excited. Um, I talked to you guys about. Um, Ready or, or not? not. Mm-hmm. That one looks good too. I'll probably go see that one. And that's like not really my thing. But it just I like things that you can laugh and be terrified at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I like I like movies. I mean, like Get Out, where it's kind of social commentary and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I like stuff that psychoanalyzes what the human condition is and what humans could do. Not really about like supernatural things. Like, oh, it's a ghost or a demon. It's like, yeah. no, these are people just being their worst. The banality of evil. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that is a great movie. Definitely worth a watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of movies, though, Shad, <laughs> tell me about Sonic. You I'm said gonna you tell you to a little about thing Sonic. about my best friend Sonic. I don't know best if you guys friend. heard about this famous actor, Good Sonic. Buddy. Good buddy, Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, Coming we were, to theaters, maybe never. <laughs> I think next year when they finalized on it, but we're gonna. T- yeah. Uh, Valentine's Day 2020. Yeah, yes. you guys want to go? We can go on a triple a cute, date. Cute date. It'll be cute. It'll be, It'll be a polyamorous uh, hey, Sonic date. Hey, fellas out there, if you want to impress your fly honey, uh, <laughs> take her to a fly movie, Sonic the Hedgehog, and go rolling see, into theaters near you, uh, Valentine's Day 2020. Go see some eldritch monstrosities that are deep in the uncanny valley. <laughs> <laughs> and have a good time. It's going to be great. I wish they would have just left it as the garbage it was going to be. We all would have enjoyed it. It would have been great. But no, they got to work their animators and even act- harder. And actually, like, make it on yeah, model. It's, yeah. <laughs> Whatever that I was going to say, it's going to come out and it's going to be like, hey, that animation's pretty good because, you know, that looks like the character that we all know, but the story's still garbage. I wonder why. <laughs> see, it was going to be garbage anyway. See, but then we'll be able to say, like, oh, now it actually looks like the character. As like, before, oh, it was like, that is like some gross blue I was, thing. I was looking at his witch finger. So I'm like, that's just an orphan. Like, <laughs> Filmed him going around the, they the put, parsonage. They put an orphan in a blue suit and made him run. <laughs> That's what it looked like. Did you see the comparison? Dance, monkey the, boy, dance. The, uh, the picture of the Sonic character model from the movie, and then they had, like, a little kid's onesie, and it looked exactly <laughs> the same. But anyway, enough about trashing the hero Sonic. We're talking... We're here to hype up Sonic. Oh, forgive me. Because when I first told Aaron that I wanted to talk about Sonic... It was right after the movie got delayed, which was a long time ago. I mean, we just haven't seen each other very much. Um, so, I, w- <laughs> I want to talk about how great the movie is going to be. Because, as you guys know, Sonic is pretty great. He's been every little kid's hero since 1992? I don't know. You don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been alive for about half the time Sonic's been alive, so as you can tell, he's a role model to me. You specifically didn't use your phone so you could look this stuff up, and you're not even... Using I know, I was going <laughs> to... I don't want to... I don't need to go back and look, because <laughs> Sonic is alive always in our hearts. Love you, Sonic, five ever in our hearts. Five ever. Oh, my um, gosh. So, sadly... Sonic the Hedgehog has been pushed back until Valentine's Day 2020. Sadly. When it was supposed to oh come boy. out in November of this year, Year of Our Lord 2019. Which, I was talking to Tristan earlier today, which is really wild that this year's halfway over. Yeah. Over halfway over. Yeah. Which is wild. Like, I, here I was thinking I was going to die before the end of 2019. I know, for real. I thought I was... I, when did I tweet the thing of like, hey, I'm still alive? That was like three uh, January 1st ago. Like, I thought I was going to die way before this. Somehow I'm still trucking. Um, but, yeah, it's wild that this year is almost over. Um, but Sonic was supposed to come out in November of this year. But we're going to have to wait until February. Uh, eight days before my birthday. 
uh, to go see Sonic live and in action. That's gonna on be Broadway. gonna be my birthday present to you. So taking you to see Sonic, and then like not <laughs> buying my ticket. <laughs> yes. and be like this. Uh, this guy like follow has been following me for five blocks. Can we get security in here and then get me thrown out? <laughs> you yelling thrown about out Sonic, Sonic. Just like no! <laughs> I finally get to see him. <laughs> they wait until. They'll wait until previews are over. <laughs> the movie starts. Then the lights will come on and they'll drag you out we of the room. We got a bomb thread. <laughs> <laughs> no! Take this man away. We're going to roll up. We're going to be prepared for the line that's going to be there to see Sonic. We're going to roll in by our tickets. No line to we're, see we're Sonic. Gonna, we're going to camp out <laughs> three days in advance. Exactly. Like, what are you guys doing here? We're waiting for the Sonic. We're waiting for Sonic. And we're just I'm gonna be clothing. Wearing... They're just like, how long have you been here? It's just like, 30 minutes, we're just poor. <laughs> no, 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 three days before. I'm going to be wearing a Sonic onesie. Oh, I'm go. not going to wash oh, for months no. before. There you go. I'll be Espio, the chameleon. I don't know. What you guys don't know Espio? No, no, Sonic sucks. What about Bean the Duck? I think that's his name. His name's Bean. Is I think he's a duck. Bat? Is there Rouge the bat? He's yes, okay. there's Rouge, and she's the seductive bat. You know how bats can sometimes be seductive? You know, that's how, how you want to make a bat, but you also want to fuck a bat? Yeah. <laughs> they. She, like, wears a heart, and that's supposed to be, like, her bra. It's really fucking weird. That's where the furry thing started. Uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, it's really uncomfortable. Um, but anyway, you guys want to talk about the plot of Sonic? What you think gonna, is going to happen? He's, He's gonna, gonna go run fast. real fast, and that's all that's gonna... There's a cop, and there's Sonic. Yeah, uh, the best part of this movie is... Sonic's uh, pairing with the Fuzz. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> fuck 12, and fuck Sonic. Um, Jim Carrey is gonna be Dr. Robotnik in this movie. He actually doesn't... It's, it I know, like it's, it's gonna, gonna, gonna be, be pretty good. I, I wanna go just for that, because it's bringing back 90s Jim Carrey, so it's just gonna be him... Riddling about like I in haven't Batman. seen anything from him recently. Uh, he had a TV show that I didn't watch, um, but I think apparently it, neither did I. I think it turned out okay. Maybe um, is it still on? Maybe it, I think that I don't was think the it thing did. <laughs> that was going around of like the one take that they did, where like they'd spin to one part of his living room and it'd be like his wife putting things on the wall. And then they was showed... he in that show? I think so, because he was like a teacher, oh or so he was like a Mister Rogers type character on a TV. So it was like as they were focusing the camera on his wife in one end of the room, the behind the scenes was showing like all the crew like grabbing things off the other side, putting in a TV, and it was supposed to be like for, like cool. a year later, and then it pans back to the TV, and then they move the other side of the room. It was really cool. I really enjoyed. Uh, stuff like that for production. Long takes are and the best. Oh going God. back to Midsummer just for a second, the practical infe- effects in that were awesome. Yeah, like, it's so cool. Like especially in I know I'm I sound like old man age of kind of person, but in the age of like CGI and like where we're getting pretty good CGI, especially in like Marvel movies or in Toy Story Four. Toy Story Four. The oh cat God, in the Toy Story 4. animation in that is insane. Mm. Um, mm, mm. but I it's I haven't either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I probably won't see it. Actually, I don't know. Um, I just don't care enough because three was okay. Uh, there was the thing that went around. I saw on Twitter of somebody re-edited the end uh, of Toy Story three, and they took out the entire thing. Like uh, it stopped right after they were like heading to the incinerator, <laughs> and then it fa- they all like join hands and accept their fate, and then it fades to black and starts like. <laughs> and they showed it to like their mom or something she's like that's not how it ends no <laughs> and it was great um but i mean that was an okay ending for me i may just see it just for the animation just to see it the cat um, is gorgeous i know i saw that part Ooh. and i was like dang they went all out for that um but like when the woman jumps off the cliff and dies they show like her head smacking into the rock and her face just gets like obliterated, and it's all practical stuff. Like the makeup Someone and whatever they use is insane. sculpted that. Yeah, it's wild. Oh, insane. Yeah, so I mean, I enjoy stuff like practical stuff and cool cinematog- cinematography tricks that people do. And they did a bunch of like really weird. I'm also going back to Midsummer. Fuck my <laughs> editing. Uh, <laughs> we'll edit this back in. Over. No, like, I'm here's not. Some precursors. You know what? This lives here now, Shad. Okay. We, you brought it up. Here we are. We could we could do a thing where we're just like I could. Uh, we'll edit it to where all of this we do all of what we're gonna talk about, and then I say like. This is the fun part, the fun end part that we recorded at the beginning, and then we put Midsummer at the end as to avoid spoilers or whatever. 
I'm not going to edit this too much. Note I'm to just, the editor, the editor's, editor's not going to do that. <laughs> Most of what I'm going to do is just fix levels. You get to hear about this audience. You like that, right? Uh, Nobody watches us. Things. We don't watch us. <laughs> I've listened to us. Fuck you. So. I have uh, too. <laughs> I think we all have. But uh, they do... <laughs> probably. Uh, they do a bunch of really cool surreal things. Uh, like... When girlfriend is wearing like a crown of flowers, the flowers are breathing with her. That was so dope! Oh my god! Uh, and like constantly, the trees in the background are like moving a little unnaturally. Yeah. Bunch of cool surreal things to just to like unsettle you. It works really well. Mm-hmm. Anyway, anything else about Sonic? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, so I knew is going to be in it, which is going to be rad. He's going to kill it bring as, us back around as Doctor Sonic. Robotnik. James Marsden, aka Cyclops. Is gonna be in it. I don't think anyone's seen that movie. You either. haven't seen X Men Three: The Last Stand? <laughs> no, the no. Brett Ratner classic there's, before he touched women. I think. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, Brett Ratner's a piece of shit. <laughs> I just hype up his movie because it's garbage and nobody else is gonna see it. Well, no one ever. Besides you, I did. Only, you're the only one. It's great. <laughs> it has okay. Hugh Jackman in magic pants. <laughs> <laughs> It is true. Is he it? goes up to kill Jean Grey and she tears off all of his clothes except his pants because it's a PG movie. You can't see his Wait, pain. is that PG or is it like PG-13? PG 13, okay, probably, that would make know. sense. But yeah. Which is the one because where... Because of PG that can show PG. Yeah. <laughs> it's not PG-13. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird like, you get one but not the other. Yeah. <laughs> In 13, um, they could say the words like fuck, but they can't show a penis. Yeah, but in PG, use... they gotta keep it clean, but they can show a penis. Yeah, you, so, you can show dicks all you want. It's a trade off. I mean, you can't have it all. So You can't have full frontal with ladies, though. <laughs> Except in Midsummer. That well, that's oh, an R rated movie. It oh, earned. Boy. Oh, God, did it earn that R rating? Yeah, for real. <laughs> it had close up drawing, crude drawing of Vag, Harry Vag so being shaven. No, yes. we're talking about <laughs> Sonic. Yes, we're talking about Wolverine and his magic pants. Cyclops, James <laughs> Marsden. And he's like, well, kids. <laughs> anyway, James Marsden is going to be in Sonic. He's going to be a fun loving cop who ain't got time for this bullshit, but he's going to tag along with Sonic for the adventure. So is this Hop 2 featuring Sonic? I don't know what Hop is or Hop 2. It was like a. Are you Easter? talking about Zootopia? No, Hop was like an Easter movie they made where Singa played Cyclops played a cop, and he runs into the Easter Bunny, and it's like I think you're talking thing. about Twenty Seven Dresses because James Marsden is also in that. I'm pretty sure <laughs> there's kind an of movie, bunny in that movie is that? <laughs> it's a real thing. He was it's just Hop. high. I would use my phone, but we use but my you phone can. to record. Because Shad there's wanted no to look such, things up. <laughs> there's no such thing as Hop. Oh, we'll he's looking it. it up. It's not um, there. <laughs> but James Marsden's going to be in it. It's going to be great. Um, I think the plot is going to go. Sonic shows up uh, because Eggman is... I'm sorry, Robotnik at the time. Robotnik's going to be experimenting on something, which opens a, a interdimensional rift into Sonic's world, preferably Green Hill Zone. I hope that's where it pops out. I think it'd be a fun little thing for the audience. Anybody that knows Green Hill Zone and Isn't Sonic and Tails and Knuckles... Isn't that the level that they start every Sonic game? I with? think so. That's fucking ridiculous. Um, if it shows up there, I, I guarantee better you... level design. The 25-year-olds <laughs> in the room are gonna just splooge. They're gonna have a great time. Chad's They're gonna about himself, freak dude. out. I'm 21. I'll be... T- no, I won't be 22 at the time, so still... He'll I'm be not in the window. <laughs> sweet baby boy, he will not quite be 22 yet. Exactly. Um... So well, everybody's gonna freak out. Twenty five people splooch. Sonic is gonna shoot into our world. Robotnik's gonna be Do like. I have to make that arm gesture. <laughs> what? <laughs> For those of you at home, Shad is making an arm gesture like he's putting a fist places it doesn't belong. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family show, Shad. <laughs> you know, sometimes there's holes, places you just gotta punch right through. You gotta oh, God. all the way through. You know, you gotta. Go into the shoulder and then you open it up like pants and you put your feet in and then he you is, go up and over like a tent. He is acting this out and it's disturbing. Oh, it's a uh, it's a good time. We'll good animate time. it. <laughs> oh, I'm not animating. It. It'll just be stick drawings. Um, but Sonic's gonna roll into our world. <laughs> roll because he rolls sometimes. Also, oh, like Sonic. Um, and he's gonna come this into is... our world and Robotnik's gonna be like, "The hell in the world is this? I, I ain't got no time to deal with this hog." And uh, Sonic's going to run off. Somehow he's going to uh, end up in that tree thing from the trailer. He's going to have a bunch of shoes because he likes to smell the feet. 
He's a real weird guy, so I mean, I don't judge. I don't judge. It's Sonic. I can't, he's a hero. I just describing. I don't are you just him. describing what you think the plot is going to be? Yes. This I have Why? had this Why you since doing? I was twelve. I let me get my feelings. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? But James Marsden's going to bust in. Cause, this is my hell. Because he's going to Sonic's going to uh, roll on into, stumble on into uh, the greater San Francisco area. And uh, James Marsden, the grizzly cop, is going to be called into action to wrangle this hedgehog. Um, he's going to find Sonic. Sonic's going to be like, the hell in the world, and then get shot. And then they go on a cute adventure where Robotnik is trying to chase him down because he's like, i got to get this guy and put him back in. Um, so they like have a big fight throughout the film. The big climax is that shot of them in the big city of San Francisco, uh, like jumping through portals and stuff of rings which didn't happen in the game so i don't know why it's on there pictured movie sega you need something i guess they have sonic what else do you need you need big the cat that's what you need Bring oh him God. In. um so sonic is going to beat robotnik and send him through his his own portal thing aaron's yawning <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got a cut on my leg, and this dog just hit my cut. Oh, I thought he was just getting bored of my plot. No, summer. it hurt so bad. I'm also, I'm also bored of the plot. But well, I'm almost at the end. Robotnik's gonna get his comeuppance by being put through his own. Did you see how I did the arm gesture again? Oh He's gonna be put through his own portal, end up in Sonic World, and Sonic's gonna be like, "We did it!" And then it's the shot from the trailer of Eggman having the long mustachio thing. Um, and everybody's gonna be happy, and then Sonic gets his chili dog. Um, cause that's an important thing, he's gotta have his chili dogs, cause Sonic loves chili that's dogs. Such dumb detail that And they it's gonna to be add. revealed that the reason that Eggman could open the portals is because he was using a chaos symbol. Cool. So that's gonna set up the big universe, and it's gonna be like a huge, like, cast shot at the end, and it's gonna have Jet the Hawk, Big the Cat, Cream the Rabbit, Amy Rose, Knuckles! They're going to have Knuckles in the film, Travis. Here I am, rougher than Knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Tougher than Knuckles. 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 Uh, it's going to be great. You guys you guys can't wait. I know you can't. You can barely contain your excitement over in that chair, Travis. Yeah, like, I think I think uh, people are just going to skip to this part that we're going to get to next. Leave a time credits. code on the oh. thing, like end of Sonic <laughs> conversation, never. <laughs> <laughs> they'll just skip to the end of the whole video. We're like an hour, so I think I think this, we're we're about to wrap it up. I was gonna uh, say, hit us with some rapid fire things. Uh, cool. Okay. Uh, rapid fire things. Uh, Jim Jones of Jonestown, Mass Suicide, Mass Murder. Thank Hell you. yeah, the cult Fame. leader. Uh, yeah, cult, famed cult leader. Also, basketball player. Also originated no. in Indiana. See? That's what I was gonna say. He's, He's from the Indiana. Guy who came yeah. to our elementary school. Jim Jones basketball. <laughs> Jim Jones. Uh. He also was a very early proponent of uh, ending, like, discrimination. Really? Yeah, he was for equal rights. Uh, and then he tr- he just did that for power, though. He's Jim Jones. Uh, but <laughs> like Jim Jones, He's Jim Jones. when he was starting out in Indianapolis, mm-hmm. he sold motherfucking spider monkeys door to door. I totally That's thought awesome. you were going to say slaves, and I was like, doesn't surprise me. No, he sold spider monkeys out of his car. Uh, Where did he get the spider monkeys? I don't know. (laughs) But I do know for a fact that he did sell spider monkeys because there's a recording of someone who bought a spider monkey from him saying like, yeah, I met Jim Jones. He's a good guy. He sold me a spider monkey after my last one hung itself. Oh my (laughs) gosh. Man. There's a lot in that statement. He influenced it. Like right before he handed it off, he was like, make sure you kill yourself a scar. And then he gave it away. (laughs) Man. Jim Jones, you ass. Yeah, also, he had sex with, like, everyone in his cult, which is not great. Who wouldn't? That's uh, the whole reason I have a cult. No, like, everyone. Am I everybody. wrong? I mean, that's what most people I know. Do. That's, <laughs> like, the, that's the whole reason cults are made Like, I want to sleep with a bunch of people. I need to become a cult leader. Same with Alistair Crowley, who's, like, the famed, like, magician dude man. Summon demons and whatnot. He had sex with everybody. Even the demons. Uh, he was, quote, a power bottom. Uh, Hell he did, yeah. He did sex magic, supposedly. My like kind of guy, the power bottom part, not the sex <laughs> magic. Oh, God, it's just the worst. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the worst combination, power bottom and sex magician. Uh, he's fun. Also, found out there's an L. Ron Hubbard theater out in Hollywood that I need to go see. Like, yeah, they do uh, theatrical performances of a shitty science fiction. Hell yeah. Uh, which is just the worst. So that's that's a bunch of random facts. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a bunch of random facts from Aaron. Uh, 
Thank you. If you've listened this far, like, what the fuck is wrong with you, for one? Do you guys want to talk uh, about Peter Popoff? Uh, no. That's all we got time for today. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Uh, I've been Aaron. That is Shad. Say something, Shad. Um, O.J. Simpson definitely killed his wife. Oh, he for sure did. <laughs> uh, be back next week because we're going to talk about O.J. Simpson in about five minutes, but it's going to be a week for you. Yep. Uh, and also Travis Honeysuckle. That's been me. Hell O.J. Yeah. killed his wife, and so will Travis. Travis.